we said hallelujah, you had to say something else. But we just say hallelujah, and then what? Hallelujah. 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 So, we know that that is our in faith victory crown. So I ask you this morning, who's got something that they need to give that victory cry in faith over this morning? Amen. No, I do. <laughs> I know I do. So let's just do that right now. You know? So we have faith, right? We have faith. The reason why we can claim God's victory in any situation in our lives, his victory through Jesus Christ in any situation in our life is because the battle belongs to him. Our battle, his battle, Jesus' battle, <laughs> the battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. So no matter what we face, on any given day, any given morning, any given evening, any given time. We can grab a hold of that. And that, that's what we do on Sunday morning here. And that's why we call that our faith victory cry. Because I tell you what, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Every Sunday I've walked through these doors, I have not felt specifically victorious every single Sunday that I walk through these doors for just this, that, or whatever reason. You know what I mean? You know, there's encumbrances that we allow to reach up and grab a hold of us sometimes. So that's just kind of what we grabbed a hold of here is just that faithful victory cry in hallelujah. 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 Yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. I think they grabbed a hold of something. I think something just got defeated in the spirit realm. And I tell you what, through all of our agreement together, it will manifest itself in this realm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I need to do some worship this morning. So I'm uh, praying that uh, you will join me with that heart of worship this morning. As we just open ourselves up for everything that our gracious Father has. Just everything that he has for us this morning. You know, what a blessed day it is that we are able to rise in the day that the Lord made and be reminded, be reminded through the Spirit to rejoice and to be glad. No matter what tries to rise up around, no matter the circumstance. You know, I uh, just came to mind a, a Facebook post that I saw. And it seems to be there's this new thing out there that you're lacking if you don't repost this. I can't, I can't stand that. It. It's like all the new forms of chain letters, you know. And so now it's like this challenge of, I can say this, but can you? You know? And so somebody said, you know, basically, even through this COVID-19 time, who can say that God has been good to them? Now, I rarely, hallelujah. hallelujah. See, that's why we're the hallelujah church, right? That's what, that's what Todd from God deemed us when he walked up. I heard this was the hallelujah church. <laughs> You're in the right place. But, you know, and I, I rarely ever comment on Facebook. I do like on hours that are generated through our feed and friends, stuff like that, I will. But I kind of stay out of the mix a little bit. But this one just, it came on my heart to just simply comment that God is good all the time, no matter the circumstances. And behind that came a longer string of amens, you know? And like, 
And so, you know, that is the God that we serve. No matter what's going on around us, He's good all the time. You know, and, and that's, that's why we can give that faithful hallelujah cry. Hallelujah. 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 So let's stand and get ready to worship the Lord. Prepare our hearts. Oh, we praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you that the freedom, the freedom that we have experienced in this country, the freedoms that have been fought for, the freedoms in this country to come together as the body of Christ and worship your holy name without fear of persecution. We thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning that we gather here together in your name, in your name, honoring, bringing glory to your name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that your hand is upon our hearts this morning, Father. We open ourselves up and we count on you to help us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts to receive your work this morning to receive your word this morning, Father. We thank you, Lord. We are here for you. We are here because of you. <laughs> and above it all this morning, we are here with you. Amen. And I continue my faithful prayer. The one request that I bring to you in this time is that you not, you not allow not one heart to leave here the same as it came in this morning, Father. We prepare ourselves. We are open to receive your good work in us this morning. We lift you up the highest and we love you the most in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. All the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time through the darkest night. His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. God is good. God is good. All the time.
Uh, so just meet us down there, and uh, it's going to be a blessed time. We usually go from about 8.30 to about 10, just right around 10. We usually finish. We uh, have a little fellowship time while we're eating, and very good. We do a topical Bible study of sorts, kind of, just very topical discussions, um, very just open discussions, and I'll tell you what, just great things have come out of our time. Really good time. So January 6th, 8.30 a.m. Then it looks like Pastor Tara let me know today that it's also time. She, she didn't say this out loud, but uh, I think she said, well, the men are coming back. The women better come back, too. <laughs> so women's Bible study is going to return uh, Tuesday, June the 9th. That'll be at 10.30 a.m. right here at the church. And she wants to get together with all the ladies and do something a little bit special coming back and uh, do a fellowship and potluck lunch after, afterwards. So that'll be Tuesday, June the 9th, 1030, right here. Um, I think in the bulletin, I think that y'all are going to be getting into the book of Galatians. So that's going to be a great time right there for sure. That's a power-packed book right there. Um, for more information, just get a hold of Pastor Tara, or you can also tap Heather on the shoulder as well. But uh, Tuesday, June 9th, 10.30 a.m. I um, just want to continue to announce the uh, family camp that's coming up. Our friends up at Fortress of Joy, they put on a family camp every year. Um, I don't think, I think all the flyers have been given out, so we'll see if we can print a few more of them off. But you can also go on their website or give them a call, and that is, uh, the phone number is right in here, and find out about that. We'll, we'll be heading up there, Pastor Tara and I and Mark and Sue will be heading up there this year. Todd from Billings will be joining us, a few people from around the state. And it's uh, honestly very affordable, too, for the accommodations and all that type of stuff, too. So if that's something that's on your heart, a little runaway, it runs from a Monday through a Thursday morning. And um, Tara didn't put, oh yeah, there they are, June 22nd through the 25th. And uh, like I said, if you go on their website, you can get the full details and even download the registration form and all that good stuff. But it's going to be a good time, good time. And it looks like there's a big old blurb in here. So full children church services where we start on June 7th. And a uh, little bit of a... Uh, Tara, I don't know, uh, a lot of people were involved in it. Adina was involved, Paula and Jean. They were really, really getting up and going right before this uh, thing that I don't feel like naming today. <laughs> um, <clears throat> kind of uh, put stop this in our tracks for a few seconds. But, but praise God, it looks like things are just going to pick right back up where they left off. You know? And then I gotta claim it. Like I told somebody one time, we don't uh, we don't serve a God of right back where we started. We serve a God increase. Yes. I gotta believe that yes. we're just gonna, yes. we're just gonna start back up. Pastor Tara and her team just gonna start right back up beyond where they left off. Looks like we got some new names and all kinds of stuff. Base camp will be our children five years uh, up to five years, and that's our nursery over here. Then we got some incline kids and ascent kids. Um, ages 6 to 8 and 9 to 13 will be downstairs, but broken up into two separate groups. Now, I do know one thing that Tara was really asking for, and uh, hopefully we can get some help with this, is that the nursery is really reserved for only for kids up to five years old. And the kids that are older than that, they either join downstairs or they stay with their parents in the sanctuary. Um, it gets a little overwhelming in there sometimes. So I'm just trying to keep track of some little kids, get some videos going, stop this one from eating crayons over here and stuff like that. And just sometimes the bigger kids being in there. So we got Sunday school for them where they're always welcome to stay right here in the sanctuary as well. But well, looks like I did uh, pick up further than where I left off with announcements. I sure got into preaching mode on those announcements. <laughs> but <laughs> praise, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> praise God. So we're going to continue to uh, just collect, collect our tithings off, tithes and offerings in the box in the back. Um, but I do want to kind of continue... What we've been doing, we've had a couple 
praise reports recently, you know, during offering time and just, just speaking about just what's on people's hearts and the victories that they've seen through their faithfulness to God and his faithfulness. And, uh, so this morning, instead of a praise report, I want to talk about my wife, Pastor Tara. So I think I'm going to call it a brag. Yeah. A little bit of a brag. Yeah, brag. <laughs> You know, I just Jenny, I can never say her last name, but Jenny Rashila, <laughs> Rashila, your guys' friend from Massachusetts or wherever that was oh, for Terry yeah. Sabell. You know, she calls her husband, I know, I know she didn't make this up, but she calls her husband her constant. You know, and, and it just it just came on my heart, the reason why I'm even mentioning that is in this area in giving, Tara has been the constant in my life. For sure. You know, and that, that's what I want to, just came on my heart as I prayed about this yesterday. Just her consistency and her constant when it comes to not just tithes and offerings, but giving in any way to God. You know, her heart, service, just everything. You know, everything that she does, she does consistently and from the right spirit. Now, don't get me wrong, she ain't perfect. She has some repenting to do sometimes and things like that. But I'll tell you what, the foundations of things, she never misses a beat, it seems. And that's the faithfulness of God being poured back out into her. God is rock steady, and that allows her to be rock steady. Amen? Amen. 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 So, you know, I jotted down here that Tara always gives generously and in faith. And a couple of things that really came on my heart was uh, when we first got married, you know, I was honestly a little bit young in my return to Christ. And I was kind of figuring things out, still kind of fully transitioning out of the world a little bit, you know, and, and, and uh, really allowing God to separate me and set me apart. But she, one thing that we talked about before we got married is she let me know that tithing was very important to her. And she must have, God must have shown her that we were going to have some rocky financial roads ahead because I didn't realize that then I just kind of gave her the, yeah, yeah, you know. Um, but uh, she said, no matter what, tithing has to come first. No matter the situation. No matter what's coming at us. Yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> well, then things came. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, no problem turned into, you sure? <laughs> you sure about this? <laughs> well, I can tell you, her giving in faith <laughs> over and over allowed God to rebuke the devourer for our sake. Amen. You know, I won't get too far into it, but you have all, most of you have heard the story of the supernatural $20. I think it was $50. I think yours was 20 Theirs was 20 Ours was 50 <laughs> You know, no matter what, just big garnishment, big bills, and no matter what, the $50 that was left over once all that stuff was taken care of, and when I say all that stuff, I'm not talking about food, gas, or any of that. Just those light bills, the garnishment, the, you know, that type of stuff like that. That went on for it a better part of three months. And, uh, man, it was just 50 bucks. Put a lot of gas in the cars. Kept food in our bellies. You know, no, we were good stewards of that 50 bucks. We didn't go out to restaurants. We <laughs> kind of uh, shopped. We Maybe we didn't have prime rib all the time. But I'll tell you what, we weren't just eating beans and rice, that's for sure. You know, we would have. But, but you know, that was her faithfulness in that. And she stood fast on that. And that allowed God to rebuke the devourer time and time and time again. You know, and, and just generously. You know, I just mentioned that she gives generously. 
And that's one thing that God talks to us. You know, he, he expects, he gives us a spirit of generosity. And so he expects that to be poured back out. And that generosity comes in so many ways. You know, it's funny. I was reading something this morning. I was reading a devotional this morning. And it talked about generosity <laughs> manifesting in the lack of judgment. When we don't judge somebody, we're being generous towards them. Amen. Praise God. You know, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Let each one of us give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Right? That really made me think of Tara. Because whenever it comes time to give, so Tara's the, she's the checkbook holder in our household. And um, probably only because we have a Mopar checkbook cover. That's probably why she wants it. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, she, she, she holds the checkbook, so she writes the checks when we're somewhere and it's time to give, or, you know, a special minister, or whatever it is, when it's time to give, right? And I noticed, Tara doesn't ever say, how much should we give? Either the check is already written before we even get there, or she just pulls it out and starts writing. She purposes in her heart with God what to give, and she doesn't falter. You know? And she has been my constant in that as well. And, and it's funny, I said it's what, what brought to mind that either the check is already written, because one time we were somewhere, it was an offering time, you know, and I leaned over and said, well, how much do you think we should give? She said, the check's already written. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said, well, how much is it? <laughs> Little check in the spirit, and I said, praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But I tell you, there's a peace about her when it comes to money. And I tell you, our, our particular personal financial situation, it's not perfect. You know, we are still, God is still bringing victory to our life to overcome a long run in the world that left behind debt and things like that, you know. But it brings a lot of peace to her life. She never worries about what's going to come down the pike, if our needs will be met, things like that. And she's, you know, God's done the biggest work in me, but I'll tell you what, she's my partner in life and ministry and all of this. And she's been my constant in that. And, you know, and it's because she's constant with God in it. You know, and that, that's one thing I love about our marriage is that we got to a place where if you asked either one of us apart from each other, um, who you love more? Your wife, your husband, or God? It's God. You know? But we put God first in all things so that we can love each other more than we ever could. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. So, anyway, that's my brag report on the table. So I would like to... Uh, I would like to pray a blessing over tithes and offerings this morning. And I'm going to pray that straight out of 2 Corinthians. A little bit further along, 9-7. 9-10. All right, so really just open your faith up to receive this blessing. The divine inspired word of God just prayed over you right now. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we all claim it yes. with a big amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we are going to get back into worshiping, so if you will stand with me. Let's give God a little bit of what we came here to do today. Oh, yeah. 
We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. And through your Father's grace, we exemplify you. Empower. Empower. To, as you said, to go and sin no more. We thank you for the empowering grace that has washed our lives, your blood, through your blood, Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Father, wash us in your word today. Wash us in your word today. Your word, the spotless lamb. Wash us, regenerate us today. Speak into our hearts today. Speak into our hearts today. Deeper reaches deeper reaches. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, Lord. Wash us. Wash us today. Search our hearts today. Find that hidden thing with us. Find that hidden thing. Make it known. Make it known to us. So that it may be removed. That hindrance, that encumbrance, make it known today so that it may be cast off and left at your cross where the work was finished. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Well, if you didn't know it, you are welcome. We expect a manifestation of your holy presence in this place today, Father. Because darkness cannot creep in where your full, perfect, glorious light resides. Shine brightly into this place today, Father. We are here for you. mighty name of Jesus we all say Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Memorial Day. You know, maybe one day I'll figure out what you're supposed to say. You know, most holidays we say things like, Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Easter, Happy Fourth of July, Happy whatever. You know, whether it's a Christian holiday or just a holiday that we celebrate in this country around independence or whatever. And Memorial Day, I always start out to say, Happy Memorial Day. And for some reason, it just feels weird when I say that. You know, so maybe I'm just making it weird, I don't know. But, you know, it's definitely an awesome day. Maybe that's what I should say. Awesome Memorial Day. Uh -huh. Welcome home. Welcome home. I like that. Blessed. I like that. That's pretty good. That's better than pretty good. That's blessed. Blessed. Hallelujah. Well then, how about welcome home? Blessed Memorial You know, this is a day when we honor those who have given all. There's a lot of sayings out there around the military. There's a lot of sayings, period. But one of the 
those sayings is, all gave some, and some gave all. You know, and that's what we honor today. You know, and not only the soldiers that gave all. You know, and praise God, you know, I, my prayer is that every soldier <laughs> that gave all found his way home to glory. God has a heavy presence in our military. You know, and I know those guys are tough. Those gals are tough. Those men and women that fight on the front lines, those men and women that serve and lead on the front lines, those men and women that serve off the battlefield. You know, I think military folks like to uh, give each other a hard time and tell each other that, oh, well, you got the easy job, you got the easy assignment. I don't think there is an easy assignment in the military. <laughs> You know, the military is a kind of illustrated, kind of like the body of Christ, sort of. The members are there, they all have their functions, they all have their jobs. And if they all do them, and do them well, then it functions as it should. It's kind of the same with the body of Christ. That's it, my message at all, so we'll see. <laughs> we will see. But you know, just what a... It's a day of kind of many kind of emotions. It's a glorious day. It can also be a somber day. You know, sometimes I'm sombered by um, not, not just the loss of life that, that we memorialize on this day, but the willingness. The willingness. You know, Pastor Mark, we're honoring people today that don't know you. But they followed orders <clears throat> unto death for you. Willing. You know, and I think that's, that's sometimes, but not heavy in a bad way. Summer's not bad. In reverence. Honor. Honor. You know, before I get off onto my message, I do want to uh, have a prayer this morning. A special prayer for Memorial Day. You know, I'm a. Uh, <clears throat> the military is very near and dear to my heart. And, uh, didn't work out for me to go into the military, and you know I praise God today. He had a plan for my life, and it obviously was not through the military. But uh, but I'm walking that plan out today, and I'm pretty grateful for it. But uh, I have a very special place in my heart for the military. So Memorial Day, Veterans Day, that kind of stuff comes around. <coughs> I'd like to take those few extra moments and just uh, thank people for their service, you know. But also thank the families, you know. So I do, from, from myself, from Pastor Tara, and from Church on the Rock, I would just like to thank all of you, you know, for the have loved ones that you're honoring today that gave of themselves so that we could be free. So that we could be free to do exactly what we're doing. So I thank you for that very much. Let's bow our heads and bow our hearts for a moment. And before I pray, let's just take a moment. Just take a moment.
as we remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms we enjoy every day. We think of how they have followed in the footsteps of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please hold our servicemen and women in your strong arms. Cover them with your sheltering grace and your presence as they stand in the gap for our protection. We also remember the families of our troops. We ask for your unique blessings to fill their homes. And we pray your peace, provision, and strength will fill their lives. May the members of our armed, serve, our armed forces be supplied with courage to face each day. And may they trust in the Lord's mighty power to accomplish each task. Let our military brothers and sisters feel our love and support. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Praise God. You know, there's another saying. <laughs> Freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. And as we honor those that lost their lives for our freedom today, it also brings to mind another that found out that freedom is not free. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus. You know, and that's, I really liked that prayer because it takes nothing away from the sacrifice that our service men and women have made, but it put right in line <laughs> their example, just as Jesus is our example in so many ways, every way in life. You know, and they both went willingly unto death for our freedom. Our freedom. You know, in John 15, 13, it says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for his friends. Now, absolutely, absolutely, that is physical. That's physical in the military, that's physical on the battlefield. That's physical, you know, all the way into, just came on my heart, first responders. Like I think about 9-11. And as they rushed in, that was a battlefield that day, you know. And they rushed in there to try to save who they could. Willingly lay down their lives for their friends. So absolutely it's physical, but I always talk a lot about also the self side of this scripture. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down oneself for his friends. Now I don't think when I interchange that word self for life, I don't think it changes the scripture one bit. Because our life is many things. Our life is our physical life right here on earth. But it's also our spiritual life flowing through us, through the Holy Spirit. You know, so to lay down our self, our self-interests for our friends is absolutely a great part of this scripture. You know, and God put on my heart this morning that both Jesus and our service men and women do both of those interchangeably. They lay down their own self-will in the willingness to lay down their lives if need be. And that's what they have both done for us. 
was, you know, and I just got a very vivid picture of Jesus in the garden this morning. And, you know, we're going to look at Luke 22:42. And, you know, I saw when I was praying this morning, and I mean, and I always see, you know, it, it's funny. We sometimes go back over the same old ground in God's word, right? But something new is always coming out of it. <laughs> something new is always coming out of it. And this morning as I prayed on this and I thought about Jesus laying his life down, I thought about soldiers laying their lives down, and as it spun into laying their own will, their own self-interest down, I saw Jesus in the garden. And that's not hard for me to picture Jesus in the garden. That's one of my favorite times with him. And, you know, but I also saw kind of almost like, like split screen style or maybe just even like actually more like um, kind of one over the other sort of, you know. And I saw a soldier kind of in the same place that Jesus was. And basically praying, just as Jesus did, to get me out of this. <laughs> you know? But then, both of them, Jesus saying, The Father, not my will, yours be done. And off unto death, for our freedom he went. You know, he set his own will aside. And I pictured a soldier doing the same exact thing. In that time, when things are imminent, danger is all around, when fear wants to creep up, praying, <laughs> you know, and maybe saying something like, well, Heavenly Father, <laughs> if you can get me out of this, I sure appreciate it. But I tell you what, I go with your will on this. You know, and in verse 43, an angel appeared to Jesus from heaven, strengthening him. And I've heard vets talk many times about laying their own will down in prayer. And remembering what they were there for and why they were there. And in that moment, they are strengthened for what they must do. You think that's a coincidence? I don't. You know, Jesus' life and the lives of those throughout the Bible parallel our lives every step of the way. There is something that we can find in the Bible that is basically a mirror image of everything that we may go through in this life. And to be honest with you, the more I study, the deeper I go, you don't even have to like take a lot of liberties or loosely tie it to. When it's that time for that scripture, for that example from the Bible for you and your life, it's clear. Crystal clear. Amen. Amen. You know, so I saw clearly today Jesus being strengthened when he was willing to lay his own will down say your will be done. I saw clearly how that paralleled and evidenced by stories of soldiers praying. Pray, get me out of this. And then coming to the place of the thing they say a lot is remembering what they were there for and why they were you know, soldiers often say they didn't have a choice. They were called.
call to it. And in that moment, they are strengthened. But God being no respecters of persons, do the same one for each and every one of us every time. When we are willing to say, not my will, Father, but your will be done. You will be strengthened. I felt a physical change in my being when I get off my fleshy, why me, how about this, whatever it is, and settle down enough to say, you know what, God? Your will in this situation is Right in that moment, I felt strength and I felt peace. You know, a lot of times I think that strength comes in peace. Anxiety. Anxiety will get us running in all kinds of directions, whether that's physically running or spiritually running, to have us all over the place. You know, so His will our own will down. I know I felt many times a peace wash over me. Tell me that that's not what Jesus needed and received in that time. Tell me that's not what a soldier needs and receives in that time. Come on, think about it for a second. What do they need more than anything in that time? They need strength and they need peace. They need to be calm and peaceful for what's coming next. They got a job to do if they're in this situation. Jesus had a job to do, and he needed to walk it out as the Father willed it. And he needed peace to do that. So praise God. He will strengthen us with that peace every time. In Matthew chapter 16 Verse 24 and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Sounds like no greater love to me. Amen. I want to look at verse 24 and amplify it real quick. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to be my disciple, let him deny himself, disregard, lose sight of, and forget himself and his own interests, and take up his cross and follow me. Cleave steadfastly to me, conform wholly, to be to my example in living, and if need be, in dying also. Wow. You know, I'm not going to get off on this, but I have to mention it, because something popped clearly out of this verse to me today. I mean, I've read this. I've had it up here many times. And I encourage you to go pray on this. And we'll probably get into this a little deeper another time. Notice right there, it says, and take up his cross and follow me. It does not say take up my cross, capital M. I'm just going to leave it at that and allow you to pray on that a little bit and dig into that a little bit. But God really put something on my heart about that. But now is not the time or we'll be here all And follow me, cleave steadfastly to me, conform wholly to my example in living, and if need be, in dying. Now, if it didn't sound like no greater love before, the Amplified short paints it in that picture. So follow me. Follow me really gets 
gets defined right there. So a follower is a disciple. Someone who cleaves steadfastly, conforms wholly to the example in living and if need be in death. I'm not a fan. But a disciple. So how do we follow? How do we become a disciple? Well, I'm glad that you asked. As John 8, 31 tells us, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. I want to remind you that Jesus was just being here when he said this. So Jew and Gentile hadn't quite been reconciled yet. So he was speaking to the Jews when he spoke it. But as his living word carries on forever, that could say Jew or Gentile now. Or just simply believer. So I know that we have heard the word abide defined as dwell many times. And it absolutely means to dwell. But I want to get a tiny bit uh, stronger with it this morning. I want to get a little further into the meat of it, if you will. So how about abide? Acceptance without objection. Abide, to remain stable or fixed. Abide, endure without yielding. So absolutely to dwell, but acceptance without objection. Now there's some meat here. To remain stable or fixed. Endure without yielding. Now that's absolutely example by Jesus. And it's absolutely example in our men and women of the armed forces. All of those words as I wrote them down this morning. I mean, just Jesus, soldiers, just endure, stable, fixed, no objection. Such good stuff. Now, what's the result of abiding in God's Word? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. abide in God's word, when we accept without objection, when we remain stable or fixed, and when we endure without yielding, we will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. It will make us free. Praise God. Praise God. So moving along to John chapter 15, verse 4. Jesus says here, I'm just going to read the first part of it. I think I've got it in the Amplified here. Dwell in me, and I will dwell in you. Live in me, and I will live in you. So... Getting into the meat a little bit more of dwell, Jesus will accept us without objection. Jesus will remain stable or fixed in us and with us. Jesus will endure with us without 
yielding. That's his promise right there. You know, the Amplified, it breaks it down, so I like how it says, live in me, but in other versions, it starts out with abide. Abide in me, and I in you. So when we abide in him, when we accept him without objection, when we remain stable or fixed in him, when we endure in him without yielding, he will in turn, you know what, just dropped into my heart. <laughs> Not that he will, but that we make him able to. Now he's able on his own. But we have to open up the ability in ourselves for him to do what he is ready, willing, and able to do. So when we abide in him, we allow him to abide, to take up residence in us and accept us without objection remain stable or fixed in us, and endure with us without yielding. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I love it when he just drops it, the answer in my heart right here for me now. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, I ended up last week's message uh, talking about a road map through the 831 32 scriptures and so I saw that road map a little bit differently I saw it in the same way but I want to I want to read those scriptures again with Jesus inserted in there if you disciples indeed and you shall know me and I shall make you free so last week I spelled out kind of a lengthy road map out of that little set of scriptures well I tell you what God reduced it this morning into one word relationship relationship. If you abide in me, you are my disciples, and you shall know me, and I shall make you free. Relationship. <coughs> relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Relationship with our Holy Heavenly Father through the Holy Spirit is the road map to freedom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Relationships, are they always easy? Nope. They take nurturing. They take time together. They take effort sometimes. You know, I heard somebody say one time about just a, a you know, a, a physical relationship here on earth, that if two people were meant to be together, it would be easy. Well, no doubt in my mind that you two were meant to be together. No doubt in my heart, actually. Has it always been easy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, so... So, as I often do, I will put us, I will put us men out there. Yeah, it is easy on us. <laughs> no, and not even being funny, but it's not. You know, it hasn't always been easy for Pastor Tara and I. And now, Lord, once you've heard me say it before, there's no doubt in my heart that Tara and I were ordained by God before the beginning of time. No doubt. No matter where our choices took us before we came together in God's plan, 
before there was even a star in the sky, he called us out. It ain't always been easy. It's taken effort. It's taken nurturing. It's taken time. And that's what we have to do with God. So as we get ready to close today, we're going to close with communion today. Chad, whoever's, we're going to have a, have a quick a song during communion today. And uh, actually, Bob, Pastor Mark, would you get ready to uh, pass the elements to the family? You know, I just encourage you to let that word, relationship, just echo in your hearts this week. Let it echo through your spirit time this week. And seek God. You know, God tells us that if we will seek Him in all of our ways, He will, he will make straight our paths. Our path, you know. And so if we seek Him this week, God, relationship, relationship, show me the path to a deeper more vital relationship with you. He is faithful to do so. I'm sure we'll get further into that down the road. But right now, let's strengthen that relationship right now through communion. Let's go ahead and pass the elements. Thank you very much. You know, Communion is something that, uh, you know, we do in remembrance. We do it in awe and reverence of what Jesus did for us. You know, and today I really want to also encourage us to not just remember what he sacrificed and how he sacrificed, but the result of that sacrifice. You know, I spent a lot of time in my walk realizing that when I didn't walk in the freedom that was laid out for me, that was made available to me through the blood of Christ, through my relationship that Jesus made the way for me to go back into the Holy of Holies with the Lord God Almighty Himself face to face. When I didn't walk in the freedom that He made available through that relationship, then I was not remembering what He did on the cross. I was not remembering that. You know, I like to say myself that I was disrespecting what He did on the cross. Because he took care of all of it. Whatever was troubling me at that time, whatever was causing me to not walk in that freedom, to not walk in that strength, to not walk out in faith, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Whatever it was, I was letting that come before the finished work on the cross. You know, so not only did, G did Jesus bear great burden and torture for me, but he freed me. And I have to remember time and time again, not only the sacrifice, but also the result. You see, because in a time of communion, we need to come to the cross. But through the time of communion, we need to be released to go beyond the cross. So let's do that right now. I'm going to look quickly at uh, 1 Corinthians scriptures for the This is, uh, this is Paul just reiterating the instructions for the Lord's Supper. 
He says right in here, for I received from the Lord, which I also delivered to you. So the Lord just handed it right down to him to reiterate in this instruction to us. And so it says in verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, what I would like us to do right now before we take the elements is I'd like us to remember not only the sacrifice, but the result. In this time of examination, what is keeping you, what is keeping me from the abundant life and freedom that Jesus provided access to through his death on the cross? What encumbrance, what hindrance do you need to lay down at the foot of the cross here today so that upon leaving it there you can go on to everything that Jesus died on that cross for us to be able to live in with and for from here to eternity so I don't have the uh, I don't don't have uh, lyrics on purpose for this song today. I just want us to bow our heads, bow our hearts, and find that thing. Find that thing that is keeping you from the abundant life and freedom that Jesus paid the ultimate price for.
as we hold the cup. We thank you, Jesus, for the blood that this cup represents, that you so willingly <coughs> spilled, allowed to be spilled for the joy that was set before you. The joy of not only sitting down at your Father's right hand, but securing the place there for each and every one of us. We thank you that it could be said that we are the apple of your eye. And we thank you today, Lord, that through that blood, every encumbrance, Every weight, every hindrance, every chain is broken. Amen. Let's take the cup. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. stay in this moment of reverence just for a moment longer. Have a blessing, a benediction straight from God's word. And I want to pray over not only you, but your loved ones, your family members, and everyone that the light of Jesus touches through you as you go about your way in this world. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what 
is well and pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. We love you. Have an awesome, blessed Memorial Day. Yeah. <laughs>